Hey guys, it's Kimberly. Welcome back to the Lumen Guru, and I'm your soul coach and intuitive advisor guiding you along the Ascension journey. Those of you who are twin flames and newly joining me, I have a cool message for you. We're going to be talking today about the current state of endings and beginnings, as well as timelines. I'm going to really dig into the timelines thing concept, and um, we're going to explore this. Okay, so stay tuned for that. I wanted to announce to you, and I, and I did announce this week to my subscribers, I have put together a weekend intensive program for clearing negativity from within. And this program is designed to accomplish what my students accomplished in their three-week intensive, all condensed into one weekend. So it's a lot of material, but it's going to be a fun, interactive type of um group setting. We'll be doing it via tele video conference. If you're worried about, oh, the weather's going to be nice outside. I don't know if I want to commit to an intensive in May. Well, take your learning outdoors. You can do any of this, even the group calls from a, a setting outside in your backyard or from nature. Um, I encourage that actually. It's a great space to learn in. And I may in fact even be teaching from outdoors if the weather is nice. So the dates are May 18th through May 20th. And you'll also receive some individual coaching over that weekend. A whole slew of information about, you know, clearing negative thought patterns, shifting belief systems, where our negativity stems, stems from, clearing out the root issues that are underneath our negative thought patterns, um, shifting into alignment, harnessing our power, and becoming better manifestors, both in the Twin Flame journey and in our, our life with our mission, all of that. So it's going to be the last time that I offer any sort of an intensive program. After this, I'm going to change my format a bit. Um, and that announcement will come a little bit later uh, towards the summer. But for now, this is a great opportunity for those of you who maybe haven't had the means to work in you know, private session and really are hungry and thirsty for the knowledge, wanting to dig in and immerse yourself in it. Um, and so there's limited number of spots. Sign up now. We're coming on May 1st now, so it'll only be about three weeks until the workshop. So, um, excuse me, I'm so sniffly. <laughs> Just was sneezing. So you can sign up on the website, theillumineguru.com. The link is on the channel art on YouTube. And click on Sessions, and it's right there. Uh, so Clearing Negativity Weekend Intensive, May 18th through the 20th. And um, I look forward to working with you guys in that program. And those of you who are wanting to work in a private setting, soul coaching, intuitive guidance, it's all available to you. Last video I posted was the May video. And remember I said something like, I, you know, I got a couple of comments on that video about when I said I don't like it. I get rather annoyed when people come to me and they're like, oh, well, what's going to happen next with my twin flame? And the reason why is because you're not allowing me to help you shift your energy back onto you. It doesn't mean that I can't help you, you know, read timelines and read energy because I can, and I can tell you what's up ahead and I can tell you where your blocks are and I enjoy helping you see those things, but you also have to come to the table with me willing to align with yourself, willing to see things within yourself. And in order to do that, you must let go of that 3D attachment. And if you're having trouble doing that, I can help you shift, but you have to want to. Um, so just to clarify that. All right. So let's talk about that. That's a great segue into timelines. Anytime you have a reading with a reader, whether it be myself or anyone else, you, they are reading a line of energy, right? They're, they're actually reading a timeline that you're feeding at some level and that can change. And so even though they're seeing something or I'm seeing something or I'm channeling something, you can change that something. You can change that outcome. You can change that trajectory and you can change that course. So when you're like, oh, well, now I have a high success rate and you guys who have readings for me know that most of the things that I tell you are, they're on, right? That's why you resonate with me in the collective readings. But Every now and then, you're going to change the line of energy. Every now and then, you're going to take a different course. Every now and then, this new timeline is going to be created, and it's going to throw things off. It's going to throw that prior reading off. 
So remember that. Remember that you are so in control of your own destiny. The, where it gets dicey and confusing is this notion of, well, what does the universe have in store for me versus what is, you know, you know, like what, what's meant to be like that, that, that phrase like, oh, well, what's meant to be will be. And I know I just have to trust and let the universe take care of it. But see, this is, there's a little bit of a, 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 a there's some fault in that. There is some flaws in that thinking. There is a little bit of faultiness. So well, the reason why is because it's not, the universe will line up with your intention. And the things that are for your highest good and your highest path are always going to be calling to you. It's just a matter of whether you're going to want to listen to that. Sometimes we get very stubborn and we don't want to listen. We don't want to hear because it's going to throw something off in our immediate environment. So for example, if you were in an abusive relationship and you knew or you know that this is not in alignment for your soul, you know that it's ripping away a piece of your soul. Um, <clears throat> you see that. You start to see that. You know deep, deep, deep down that you need to get away from this person to reclaim pieces of your soul and to put yourself back together and to get aligned with yourself. But at some level, you're not wanting to see that, right? You're not wanting to do that. So you stay in it. You stay in front of the abuse and you stay in it longer and you stay in it longer and you stay in it longer. Or you try to walk away and then you come back. Or you try to walk away and then you come back. And so in that instance, you are feeding two timelines. You're feeding this timeline of, I really should walk away. I feel my soul's calling. I feel like I know the healthier choice for me, but I just can't, I just can't do it. I just can't break from it. I'm going to miss this person. I love this person. There's some addiction or some, something here that's keeping me here. And so in this timeline, you're going to, you're going to learn harder lessons, right? You're going to, um, maybe you're staying there for your soul's evolution so that you can get cracked open and, and then our cracking open. We're usually hurt, right? So um, that's usually the only reason why I would stay in front of abuse until we like really, really get it, that it's time to align, right? So this can happen. This could be this same scenario with a job. I'm in a, you know, I'm in a toxic job and I know I need to leave. I'm thinking about getting another job. I'm looking at jobs online. I'm thinking about starting my own business, okay? Um Let's say that there's three timelines that you're feeding. I could stay here and be miserable, um, but I know I want to leave. So I'm thinking maybe I'll get another job or maybe I'll start my own business. So, so there's the three timelines. Um, there's probably, so let's just take the scenario that like, yeah, you're going to be moving into a mission-based business. You know that. You feel that. That's your soul calling. But you're going to need a bridge until you can do that. Like, so maybe it's, I'm going to, you're going to remove yourself from the toxic job environment, find another job environment that's more flowy, fluid, healthier, balanced, in which it's just easier. There's less resistance. And from that place, you can keep your security and maybe, maybe work on the other stuff on the side until it's ready to make the break. So, but what happens is we get confused, okay? We, we don't always see it that easily. We don't really see it from the higher perspective. We don't say, okay, so eventually my soul, you know, is going to want to do this. So right now I need to create a bridge and, um, or, you know, either my soul is going to stay in this and learn the hard lessons or it's going to go over here and align with itself, right? So, or I'm going to align with my higher self. So what it looks like in the plane of reality, what I hear from you guys is confusion. And I've been there myself, so I understand. So you, we get into a state of confusion. And that confusion, whether recognized or not, right, whether you're saying, oh, I'm confused, or wow, I'm feeding five different timelines, whether you recognize it consciously or not, you are. And what it creates is like a very contradictory vibration. And 
your energetic vibration is a point of attraction. It's the it's part of the law of attraction. So if any of you follow Abraham Hicks or anybody who preaches about the law of attraction, you will understand the concept of what you are thinking about and what you're focusing on is what you're attracting into your experience. And the vibration that you're feeling from within, whether it be fear or love, that is exactly what you're going to attract into your experience. So when we say, oh, I don't know how I manifested my greatest fear. Well, you manifested it because you focused on it. <laughs> okay. And you see some people manifesting their great loves and you say, oh, wow, I wish I could do that. Well, the reason why is because they focused on it and they didn't resist it in any way. Okay. So. Where we have trouble is clearing out the fear-based thinking, clearing out the negativity, and getting into a, a, a state of love, right? So that we can attract what we do want rather than what we don't want. So, so let's look at this in terms of, I've, I've just given you many different examples that are kind of all over the map, but I'm doing that per, on purpose so you can start to think about, oh yeah, I've done that. Oh yeah, I felt, I've. I, I do this all the time. I'm feeding multiple timelines. There's many different outcomes to any one given situation. And often when you're weighing options or you're needing to make a decision, you're going to go down all of those paths, right? So it's the one that you think about the most, that you focus on the most, that you're really calling into your experience. So here's where it gets all dicey with Twin Flames. When you are, so let's just say you're in a separation. I hear this all the time. Ugh, my twin isn't coming around. You know, he's such a jerk. He's got so much work to do. I, I need to just leave him and focus on me. Okay. Now, at some level, that's true. You do need to focus on you. You need to allow him or her to do what they may and, and, and allow them to heal on their own time and let that go so that you can align with yourself. But the piece of that that doesn't feel right to me is the piece in which you're, you know, trying to control that person or trying to um, kibosh your own feelings. So you're going, oh, they're a jerk. I'm going to do me. It's like, no, that's you're closing down the love that you feel in your heart. Um, you're not being truthful because of fear. Because what I hear in that statement is, well, they're not coming right now. This is the underlying theme. They're not coming right now. I feel hurt. I want them to be here right now. So I'm just going to go over here and do this, right? And that to me is like denied feelings, denied aspects. Um, there's an undertone of fear. So sometimes when you guys talk to me, right, whether in group sessions, private sessions, I hear these things. And you're like, wait, I didn't say that. And I said, yes, you did. I can feel the undertone of what you're saying. And in that undertone is an energetic vibration. And in that vibration is the timeline that you're feeding. And if you're feeding that timeline out of fear, you will manifest it. So where does this get even dicier? When you guys say something like, I don't want to wait for him or her any longer. I'm going to call in a new person. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call in a new person. That person will, um, will treat me better. That person will be better for me. The truth is, is that anyone that you call in is going to be a complete vibrational match to where you are. So if you haven't done your work and you're not completely aligned within or you haven't healed your wounds, you're just going to attract in the person who's going to mirror whatever is still alive within you for you. It, it, you cannot go from having this twin flame mirroring to having the relationship of your dreams without doing the work in between. Because your twin flame is here to mirror all of your wounds, all of your stuff. And if you haven't done your work in between, and the next thing you want to do is just call in another person, a replacement, let's say, someone to help you get over your broken heart, or someone to make you feel better, treat you better than the twin, guess what? It ain't going to happen. And it's not going to happen because you haven't done the work in between to come into alignment. Now, the other scenario, which I do see with a lot of my clients, is, okay, they're putting the twin flame on hold. They're not even sure if it's their twin, right? But they know that there's a catalyst here who sparked a greater healing for that. They go to their healing. They do their healing, 
really fully in layers over time. They spend time dedicated to themselves, self-focusing. And then they begin to release some of these desires, right? Like out to the universe. Oh, you know what? I'd be, I, I really am desiring the feeling of um, connection. I'm really desiring the feeling of, you know, someone complimenting me or having physical intimacy or, you know, having that getting to know someone feeling or those butterflies. I'm really desiring someone to come in and, you know, pursue me or to treat me like a queen. And often these desires are just really being born because we're aligning with ourselves. We're putting our crown on. We're getting in alignment. We're loving ourselves more. And because we're more lined up, we can call that soulmate in, okay? And many of you, for many of you, that's happening right now, okay? That's what I was talking about my May forecast. You, the result of your better alignment is calling in a soulmate, where I feel like I need to express to you that it's important to get clear is those of you who are saying, I want the union with my twin, but you're stuffing your feelings down and you're saying, oh, but I'm just going to go over here and do this. And you're not doing the work in between because what's going to happen is you are going to call in that other person and it's going to be a vibrational match to where you are in an unhealed space again. And there'll be... Maybe not all the same mirroring is with your twin, but there'll be aspects of that that get mirrored for you again in some way, shape, or form. And so when we feed timelines, like if you're saying intentionally, I really want to be with my twin, but then there's a piece of you that's going, I don't want to wait. I don't want to do this. I don't want to, you know, um, so I'm just going to call in that other person. It's almost like it's denial, it's stuffing down our feelings, it's um, trying to seek things outside of ourselves. Oh, this person can't give it to me, so I'll go get it over here. But you have to get okay with receiving it from within, giving it to yourself and receiving it from within. That's what's going to create the perfect alignment to call someone new in or to invite your twin flame back in as more of a match to you and from your more healed space, right? That means that you're, lit, you're raising the bar, you're holding the torch for them to do their healing to come back in and match up with you. So don't feed timelines that you're not wanting to manifest, okay? Um, don't think about the things that are basically like rebellious thoughts or some ways you running away from yourself because they will come into your experience. Um, not always in the exact way that you expect, but they're coming towards you nevertheless. Um, some of you really don't want to be calling in another person, but at some other level you are and you're not even really knowing it. Because you're feeling hurt. That's what, that's what I get most of the time. Is that you, from hurt feelings, from not getting what we need outside of ourselves, like in the mirroring with our twin, we'll call in someone to try to fix that. Right? I'll just go over here. This person will fill that need for me. But what you're, what you're doing is, one, you're feeding a timeline that you really don't want. It's not really the truth of your soul. And two, you're seeking outside of yourself, as I've just said. So very important to get very, very clear about these things. Some of you ask, well, how come I see, and I've said this before in videos, but I'll say it again. How come I see like this future vision of, you know, me and my twin flame, you know, in a sacred union or in some sort of a partnership, like. You know, some of you say, like, it feels kind of far away. I don't know if it's a memory of a past life or if it's, like, a future vision. But why does that keep popping into my head? You may even be in another relationship, a karmic or a soulmate relationship, and you may still feel or see this vision. It's quite normal. I hear it quite often. Um, it is a timeline, okay? It is something that you can connect to. And, um, so this is another aspect of timelines. So there's the things that we desire from within, which you have to get clear about what your truth is. 
so that you're calling in the right timelines, so that you're aligning with the right timelines, you're calling in the right things, right? For your soul's evolution and for your highest good. If you're coming from a denied aspect, you're calling in all these things out of hurt, out of anger, out of anguish, out of sadness, out of looking outside of yourself, that's when things are going to get all mucked up, okay? You're going to go, how did I end up here? That's not what I really wanted, you know? And then you're going to go back to square one and go, oh, shit, I have to do my work on me, right? But then there's this other type of timeline, and it's the one that most of you are really tapped into because you all are psychic to some degree and you all have intuitive gifts and I know that I'm working with all of you and so when we receive intuitive messages right like oh this is coming or you can see something happening that is a glimpse of a timeline of a future timeline that's coming through with twin flames it's most likely something that you've both fed at a soul level um, so be careful because when you attach in the 3D to that timeline, that vision of, you know, marriage, sacred partnership, or whatever that is that you're seeing, you may become fixated on the outcome. And then when it doesn't show up when you want or how you want, you squash the timeline. And a lot of times when you're seeing that vision, it's because, like I said, both twins have fed it, have fed that timeline at some level. Either they've had the thought about it, they've felt it at some level, or it's just their higher selves seeing the possibility of what the union could be. And so, when you're seeing this, it's so important to just see it, to feel it, to feel how it feels. Oh, that feels so good. That feels so nice. That, oh, that would feel so amazing. The problem is, you know, given our 3D circumstance, whether we're with someone else or we're like, what shit? I haven't talked to this person in two years. How is that going to happen? That's what ha that's when we energetically mess ourselves up because we come back to the 3D and we go, we doubt, we put negativity in the way, we doubt, <laughs> we put negativity in the way, and we block that timeline from happening. Whereas if we can just see it, feel it, and then release it and get right back in alignment with ourselves, that's when that timeline out there can come to fruition. It's when we take our focus off of the how and the when and the what. This doesn't make sense. Don't try to make sense of it. Receive it. Release it. Um, we do mess up our true intentions by not getting true with ourselves. So ask yourself what your intention is. If your intention is, okay, I'm, you know, I'm really feeling like union is possible between my twin and I, I really do feel like that's something that I want to move towards. Well, then admit that to yourself, but you don't need to sit and focus on it every single day. That when twins, all you have to do is just imagine how good that coming together will feel and then let it go. Focusing on it every day will bring in, I mean, very few people could focus on it every day and with the absence of it in the 3D, feel really pure about it. That's the problem. Okay. Very few people would have the ability to do that. You would have to be so aligned with yourself, so in the state of unconditional love, so in the state of detachment and surrender to be able to hold that vision so purely on a daily basis and focus on it. Without expectation, without timeline, without attachment, without anything, and still keep that alive. Do you see? Where most of us get tripped up is like saying, I want the union. I'm going to think about it all the time. I'm going to think about why he's not here, why he is here. Oh, no, but I did imagine that vision of it feeling so good. But then I went into thinking, oh, but that's never going to happen. Oh, but, 
you know, maybe I should go over here and date this other person. Uh, maybe I should call someone else and who's going to treat me better. Oh, he's never going to heal. Oh, maybe you see all the contradictions that come into play. And it's, it's, it's a product of, you know, not being in full alignment with ourselves. And so the best thing that we can do is no one's saying that you can't desire a union. And especially if you guys feel that coming at some point in time, allow that to just be, but then get focused and aligned with you because all this other shit that we put in the way by looking at the 3d, looking at the lack of what's here now, what's not what we want, you know, it gets very mocked up. Like I said, some of you are calling in soulmates who are better matches for you and your more healed space at this time. They may be life partners. They may be someone to come in and support and reflect to you your more healed space. Others of you are calling in karmic partners who are going to be the reflection of your unhealed space. They're going to probably be the people that help you evolve in the ways that you're not wanting to go to in your conscious healing. The lessons, right? The lessons that turn into blessings. The I'm not lined up with myself yet, but I'm going to call in a new partner. Whoa, wow, that partner is going to help you see your wounds. Uh, we're going to help you learn a hard lesson. So I hope that that's clear. Um, your power of intention. So what, what I would, okay, so here's an exercise. Write down, open a blank page in a notebook or a journal or grab a piece of paper and write down what your intentions are on, in every level of your life from right now, from where you stand right now, what you're intending. Um, so mine, okay, so Mine might look something like I am uh, on a mission. I'm intending to continue to grow this coaching business. I, I, I'm intending to launch this new venture, right? And I see this happening um, sometime over the next several months. I'm intending to, um, you know, come into full union with my twin flame. I'm intending to blah, blah, blah blah, 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 blah. So from where you stand in your physical shoes now, plot out what your intentions are. Now look at those intentions and say, what of those are pure, pure, pure? And what of those are fear-based, um, denied aspects of yourself, denied feelings, um, ways in which you're running from yourself? Get really, really pure with your intentions. If your intentions are not pure, what you're attracting into your experience will be a product of the underlying stuff. Does that make sense? So you could say, I'm intending to come into union with my twin. You have all this underlying shit in there that's going, yeah, but he's never going to change. But I really need someone to align with me better. And um, so you see how you're contradicting it. Get the contradictions out of the way. Because the first thing that we need to do is become conscious of where we're contradicting it. And why? It, because most of the time you're contradicting it because of fear. Okay? Because you're afraid it won't happen or disappointed that it's not happening on in the time frame or in the way that you want it to in the 3D. But when we let go of all of that and we just keep the intention out there and keep it pure, um, we can release the timeline. There are some things that, like I said, when you're launching a venture or when you're, um, you know, getting set to do something that has some sort of a timeline in 3D, you could say, well, I feel like this is going to happen in the next few months. I'd like to, you know, I'm intending to, to get this off the ground in the next few months. But don't stay attached to that. It may not be, okay? It's going to be the timeline that you feed. It's going to happen in the timeline that you feed. If you're feeling doubtful, if you're feeling not capable, if you're feeling unsure, if you're feeling anything. You'll block the money from coming to support it. You'll block it manifesting. You'll put roadblocks in the way. The project will go slow. It will have um, interference. It will be rerouted. We put the blocks in our way through resistance. Resistance are negative thoughts. 
negative thoughts stem from fear. And oftentimes we're unaware of how we're, how this fear is vibrating from within. They're subtle. They're very subtle underlying thoughts. They're very subtle untruths that are alive within us. So that's why I've created this weekend intensive also to help us clear this negativity from within. Because you can't get clear in, in manifesting the exact in, thing that you intend until you're really clear from within what you're intending. And you clean up all the messiness underneath it. And we vibrate fear from, and I've said this before, but for those of you that are new to my channel, I'll say it again. We vibrate fear from our core wounding, from our programming, ancestral, societal programming, from past life karma. There's so many layers that need to be cleared. Those form beliefs, and then those form thought patterns. And we can't just heal the surface layer and not heal the root. So that's what that workshop that I put together is designed for that intensive program to help you get to the root and shift the patterns, shift your thinking patterns. That all, that all of that affects what you feed and what you attract into your life. So no matter what it is, if you're trying to attract, you know, freedom in your, in your work, or um, your mission-based business, um, or venture, or or mission, or you know, or initiative. Whether you're trying to attract a soulmate, or you're wanting to attract the the lining up with your twin flame in a harmonious union, you've got to clear the negativity within, so that you can feed a timeline with pure intention. And you can line up with, you won't even hear really the clarity um, or, or see the clarity until you are in alignment with yourself. And you can't come into alignment in the state of fear. So it's that negativity that's holding you out of alignment. And it's creating all these confusing timelines. And then you're going, well, why did that show up? Why is this taking so long? Things can take a Timelines can be very short. Like you can manifest very quickly when you get out of your way, when you take the resistance out of the way, when you take the doubt out, when you take the wobble and the confusion and all that other muck, when you take the other timelines that you're feeding out of the way and you just start feeding one timeline. That's when things can manifest and manifest quicker and easier. Okay. So if you guys have questions on that, reach out to me or sign up for that intensive program because we're going to talk about all of these things in depth and as they pertain to you and your core wounding and your core beliefs and um, I'm going to help each and every one of you who sign up for that really, really get to the bottom of these thought patterns, issues, and how we feed timelines almost inadvertently, right? So I'll leave you with that message, and I hope you guys are having a great week. Oh, one more thing, endings. I did mention that at the beginning of this video. This is where we're at. It's April 27th today, and we are coming up to the – I don't even have it on my board anymore. I've turned it over to May, but April 30th, uh, full moon is – uh, it's one of change. Some of you said, I've lost my job. I'm being kicked out of my house. I my house is being sold. The house I'm renting is being sold, and I've got to move. Um, I just got laid off of my job. I mean, I'm hearing this all over the place. I want you to know it's like I said earlier. Go back to videos. I said it's like the trains coming through the station, and it's lifting you up to a higher timeline. Like the the trains going. It's the Ascension train, by the way. <laughs> the Ascension train is pulling in. And you're going, oh, like there's a piece of you that's like, oh, I'm not sure if I want to step into my gifts. Oh, I'm not, I'm not ready to come into alignment. And the conductor's coming through and saying, all aboard. And you're like, oh, I'm not ready. And then he's going, and he's pushing you onto the train and the doors close. And then, boom, you're on. So this is what's happening. Those of you who have been resisting that next level of ascension or resisting, you know, the changes that you need to make um, that'll 
puts you in truer alignment with this highest path, you will be forced. And the changes, although it feels tumultuous while it's happening, because it feels like the tower card in the tarot deck, and it feels um, messy, and it may feel like an unearthing, it is an unearthing, but it's an unearthing for a regeneration, a rebirth, and a much a rebirth that will be in much fuller alignment with who you are, the truth of your soul, and where you need to be going. So trust, 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 trust. Those of you who are, are seeing endings in relationships, karmic relationships, um, even where you're with a twin flame or a twin catalyst, and you're feeling, I need to pull away from this, this is toxic, um, or this is not right for me right now, um, or the other person's pulling away from you, and you have no say in it. They're, oh, Stella's here. Hi, Stella. Oh, here she comes. Um, those endings are for you so that you can work on other things. Those separations so you can work on other things. Some of you are with Catalyst and you're calling in soulmates who are going to come in and align with your higher path and step in and align with your more improved state. Some of you are with twins and needing to take a separation that is going to up-level you in a huge way. And in effect, in time, will up-level your twin or help that twin step back in to be uh, more aligned with your higher state. Um, some of you, you're moving into a time of union, and this doesn't even really apply because your twin flame is stepping towards you. Um, where, so, so, so be mindful of that. Trust the endings, trust the endings, trust the endings. If you're feeling like you need to end something, like actually physically take action towards ending something, towards closing a chapter or saying this is not in alignment for my soul, listen to yourself. This is the time to do it. There isn't a better time. There won't be a better time this year to walk away from something that's not serving you. This will be right now, the next, hmm, I'm going to say the next week is the best possible time for us to do this, to do the leaving, to do the closing the door, to do the aligning with our true self. Um, it's going to be easier for us. Um, it's going, you just have to trust. Okay. Um, for those of you who are having friction in your twin flame relationship, um, I'm looking at what Stella's doing, seeing if she wants to join us. Stella, Stella, do you want to come join us? <laughs> she's, she's just kind of sitting watching. Um, those of you who are experiencing any type of friction in your twin flame relationship, um, I, I'm really feeling like it's because you guys are feeding the same timeline, then you're feeding different timelines, and you're feeding the same timeline, then you're feeding different timelines, and you, and then when you're feeding this timeline, your twin's getting upset, and when he's feeding, the, he or she's feeding this timeline, you're getting upset. You guys need to be feeding the same timeline in order to create this harmonious union and some of you are stepping towards union you really need to get on the same page energetically and through your thoughts and if you need assistance doing that clearing out that negativity work with me in private session take that intensive program this is important to become mindful of this the fighting the push pull many of you it doesn't have to go on any longer it's happening as a result of this what i just showed you the doubt, like, no, I want to be with you. The doubt, no, I want to be with you. The running, defense, oh, no, I want to be with you. And so it, it, with the twins right now, what it feels like is one's looking toward, okay, so it's like they both want to look towards each other. Okay, say this is you and your twin. But then you're like having, something's happening, and you're having like a doubt, or you're thinking a negative thought, or you're thinking you'll go elsewhere, and you're going like over here. And then your twin's like barking, right? And then you come back and you're like, oh, no, 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 I love you. Don't bark at me. Don't run away. Just stay right here. And then you're like, okay, I'm present. I'm feeding this timeline. I want to be with you. And then your twin's like, oh, okay, but maybe I'm going to have a doubt now. Or maybe I'm going to go feed this timeline. 
and da, 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 da. and then you start either it's not even a chasing like it just it just feels like it's friction okay it doesn't even feel I don't even feel like for many of you like the runner chaser dynamic is really at play so much or maybe it's just that they're showing it to me in a different way because this does look like the runner chaser dynamic but it it's having to do with timelines so if you're in this dynamic try to get focused on just feeding one timeline try to get focused on being present and looking at why are you running why are you wanting to feed different timelines what are the denied aspects or feelings within you why are you doing this why are you glorifying a different outcome why are you why are you doing that is it the truth of your soul or is it just stuff that you're telling yourself to feel better that's where you have to make the discernment Okay, before you can come in to hold space harmoniously together. All right, so I'll leave you guys with that. Thanks for joining me. I hope that was clear. That was a lot. There was a lot of different messages in one video, but they're all connected. And the reason why I told them like I did is because it's going to resonate for for each of you in different ways. You're at different points, different aspects um, in feeding these timelines and creating these outcomes. Um, but you'll know who you are and you'll know what resonates for you. I can be sure of that. So have a wonderful day. I love you guys. Thanks to you all for following and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.